topic is reproduction. We're going to start off by talking about mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis refers to the process of cell division. Let's write that down. This is a type of cell division that produces identical cells. When we're referring to identical cells, we're referring to the same number and the same type of chromosome. This type of cell division is going to be responsible for making somatic or body cells. That's the word that some people had a little bit of trouble with. So somatic just means body. They're synonyms for one another. The next type of cell division that you can have is something called meiosis. Once again, meiosis is a type of cell division. And the way to keep these two straight, since they seem very, very similar, is remember meiosis has that E in it. So meiosis is responsible for making sex cells. Sex cells always have half the number of chromosomes. Why is that? That's because they're actually going to be responsible for making gametes. Gametes are just sex cells, so they include sperm and they include eggs. Now, meiosis in, is important because it leads to a lot of variation. Variation is referring to differences within individuals. Now, one thing that is not covered in this chapter, but you might want to add, is going to be something called asexual reproduction. We're going to talk about human reproduction, but asexual is left out. Asexual reproduction is referring to just one parent, and it also means that there's no variation, so all of them are going to be identical. Very, very similar to, my, to mitosis, but different things. One's a type of cell division, and the other one's going to be a type of reproduction. So now, on to human reproduction. Human reproduction is regulated by hormones. First up, we're going to look at the female reproductive system. For the female reproductive system, we have the three major parts that you need to be familiar with. You need to be able to name them, and you also need to be able to identify what their function is. First thing is the ovaries. Ovaries produce eggs and estrogen. Estrogen is one example of a hormone. Now, the other hormone made by the ovary is something called progesterone. You can be familiar with both of these and be able to provide them as examples. The ovaries are going to be located on either side of the female reproductive system, and that's where the egg originates. Next thing we have are the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tube, remember fallopian, is going to be where fertilization takes place. If you don't remember what fertilization is, fertilization is when sperm and egg meet, and then they make a fertilized egg, which is referred to as a zygote. Where does fertilization happen? Well, it happens in these tubes right here. Sometimes instead of being called a fallopian tube, it could also be called an oviduct. Feel free to use that terminology if you're more familiar with it. Now, the last part we have is the uterus. The uterus is going to be where the baby develops, where the fetus develops. We're going to look a little bit more with fetal and embryonic development in a minute. Those are the three parts of the female reproductive system that you must know. For the male reproductive system, there are also three parts that you need to know. Once again, this is going to be dictated by hormones. The hormones for the male are going to be testosterone. First reproductive organ that you need to know is going to be the testes. Testes produces sperm, and it also is going to produce testosterone. Testosterone is the male hormone. And sperm is going to be the male gamete. Where are the testes located? There are two testes. Both of these testes are going to be responsible for making sperm. Next part we have is the vas deferens. The vas deferens are the tubes, so this entire tube right here on either side that connects to the testes. And the function of that is more or less to be a transport system from 
the tattoos for two million and stuff. Note some people sometimes get these cut. When these are cut, that's called a vasectomy. People who have a vasectomy still make sperm, just sperm is not released from the body. The last part that you need to know for the male reproductive system is going to be the glands. The glands are located right here. You'll notice that dotted line on either side. Those represent a gland. The other gland is going to be represented by this gray area. And then finally, we have the last gland, which are those two little circles coming off of the urethra. Glands are important because they are going to be responsible for making semen. Semen is the liquid that the sperm travels in. Why is this liquid important? Well, this liquid is important because it provides nourishment for the sperm. So your sperm need a lot of energy to get to their destination. It also provides a liquid environment. That's how sperm travels. Once fertilization does occur, remember fertilization occurs inside the fallopian tube, what happens? We have a nice diagram on the bottom that shows step by step what's going on. They frequently have this diagram on the region, either as a part two or a part one style question. First thing we have is fertilization. Fertilization is getting represented by A and B together. So it says sperm and egg meet and form a zygote. That's what C is. C is your zygote. Remember, fertilization occurs inside of the fallopian tube. Another thing that I'd break down about fertilization that they love to ask is that it restores the chromosome number. What does that mean? Well, remember, sperm and egg only have half the normal number of chromosomes. Sometimes you'll see that represented by the number 23. So you would have 23 chromosomes in the sperm and 23 chromosomes in the egg. When those two come together to form the zygote, then you get your full and complete set, which is 46. If we're not talking about a human, though, and we're just talking about any old organism, a lot of times they represent this by the letter N. So you would have N number of chromosomes inside of the sperm, and then N number of chromosomes inside of the egg. And when those two come together, you now have two N, which is a complete set. The next step in embryonic development is going to be mitosis. So you start off as one cell. As we all know, we're made up of millions, billions, trillions of cells. How do we get to be made up of so many cells? Well, that's mitosis. Mitosis, which we talked about a little bit earlier, is just saying that we're going to go and we're going to make one cell into two cells, two cells into four cells, four cells into six cells. The cool thing about this is that each one of our cells has the same exact DNA. Meaning at this point, C to D, they can become anything they want to become. They could be a brain cell, they could be a heart cell, they could be a liver cell. The last step is going to be something called differentiation. I would listen up for this part because this is a section that many people have difficulty with. Differentiation is represented more or less by E. Now what does differentiation mean? It's not why you're different than your parents. I know it's confusing because you see the word different, but actually what it's talking about is it's saying every single one of your cells has the same exact genetic information, but they do different things. So why is your heart cell different than your brain cell? When we talk about genetics, we'll get more into this, but that's because certain sections of your DNA are turned on. So if you were to look at a long segment of DNA, if we're talking about differentiation, let's say we want to know, mm, you know, what part is the heart cell in charge of. Maybe if you're a heart cell, you only read this section of the direction. But if you are a brain cell, you read this section. But regardless of what type of cell you are, you have that whole complete set of DNA. slides. We've got fetal development. Fetal development is there in that image. You can see the baby developing inside of the mother's uterus. This entire structure here where the baby is, that's your uterus. 
And if you were to look off to the side, both of those are going to represent our fallopian tubes. So the question is, what is A? A is going to be what provides the baby with nourishment. What provides the baby with nourishment is called the placenta. Placenta allows for the diffusion of gases, nutrients, and waste between the mother and the child. This is also where, if the mother were to have any toxins, toxins can also diffuse across the membrane. And those toxins are especially bad for the baby because the baby is still developing all of its major arteries, all of its major organs. Last slide is going over the human female reproductive system. This was on the regions last year, this diagram. We actually did a lab that also had this diagram on it. It seemed to confuse a lot of people on the test, though. If you look at section A, it says events in the ovary. Remember, the ovary is going to be where the egg is. It says events in the ovary. It's really just saying what's happening to the egg. If we look here, this little circle, which you can see throughout, that actually is the egg. Eventually, that egg is released from the ovary. What do we call that? Well, when the egg is released, we call that ovulation. That happens about day 14. Remember, that's just an average for all women, so you could have a little bit of give or take in either direction. The next section, B, says hormone levels. Remember, the entire menstrual cycle is going to be controlled by these hormones. There's actually two other ones, too, in case you forgot. There's one called LH and one called FSH, but we rarely see those. So let's just focus on the estrogen and progesterone. What you'll notice is the amount of estrogen and progesterone change throughout the cycle. That's why maybe some people would say women are slightly hormonal because of the fluctuation there. The last thing we have is the lining of the uterus. The lining of the uterus changes. If you look at day zero, day zero it actually looks kind of thick. Then it immediately goes down. This is because day zero represents the day where the woman actually is menstruating. Meaning she's losing the lining of the uterus. As those hormone levels change, though, what you'll notice is that the uterine lining is able to get thick again. Once it gets thick around this time, this is where if you were going to be pregnant, the embryo would implant. And that's it for human reproductive.